So, the wheel's absolutely soaking on the top, Hi, but the sun will come out and bum it off. Oh, there's mum. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning sheep fans, it is a glorious September day here in Ayrshire I am out with Meg and Skye, that's the two dogs and we are gathering in the Cheviot mule and Cheviot lambs essentially the lambs off the Cheviot ewes and we're going to be taking them home we're going to be tagged, shown, Zolvix does, hip to back for the ewe lambs and I'll keep them in a little holding pen at home give them a good chance to clear out after the Zolvik stows and then they'll be moved on to the wintering nice clean lush grass it's looking very long actually and it's a bit early and I'd usually put them on but the grass is needing it it's getting to that point where it might end up growing a bit too long for them Are you Meg? Where are you? Yeah, we... Lie down, lie down. Cut a nice meal of lambs, shame about the tails. Mid September, it's unusual for it to be this warm. We're sitting about 21 degrees or so today. Fantastic weather, even the nights are very mild as well. So I'm going to get away with getting these shown as late as this. He says, we'll soon find out. Lie down, lie down. She doesn't lie down, but at least she stops. You always get a lamb does this. We lie down. Hello. Always a great way to stay in shape running after sheep. I highly recommend it. So you get to this awkward point in the process where you want them to get in this pen here, but they'll just want to break away this way and then break away by the dog See, Shh. <laughs> Luckily, my mother was passing and she's going to give us a hand here to keep this gate down here. You just wait down there, mum, and keep them in. No, down here at the edge of the gate. Try not to let them slip by the gate. We'll bring them down and try again. Come by. These things happen a lot around here. Maybe the you come through here.
is the next day here in sunny, sunny Scotland. We had a cracking day yesterday, we're up about 23 degrees, middle of September. It's to be about 21 again today. Finished late last night, about 8 o'clock, and didn't put my wool away. I had like the heaviest dew we've had for a while. So the wool's absolutely soaking on the top. Hi, but the sun will come out and burn it off. Oh, there's mum. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like the camera. What's she doing, Wilson? You saying good morning, sheep fans, Catherine? So that's my sister. They are hiding from the camera. She's not into the limelight. We're gonna have a look at the hogs that we show. We're gonna get them up. Today's plan: we are going to Heptavac. We're going to Zolvix, Wimdos, and we've got to get them all tagged. Does somebody might say Cami should not be tagged before they're moved? And the answer to that is yes, they should. However, I literally just brought them in last night. They're going to be tagged and uh, movement done and numbers all recorded. So let's get them up and get started. Great story, this old blackie here. She, uh, she was supposed to go last spring, but she was over on the neighbor's bit where she was. She's no teeth. I didn't even see her get to the top, but she had a quite nice female lamb that's still running with her there. But this will be her last year. She's got no teeth. And when that happens with sheep, they really struggle to graze, especially during the winter months. Summer it's fine, the grass is nice and long, but in the winter when the grass gets shorter, it gets quite hard for them to graze. So she'll be going away to market at some point once I get the ewes gathered up that are going. I need to get through all my other sheep that are actually down the back there and see what's going to be going to the top and what's not going to the top. That'll be another vlog coming. Obviously all the shearing is finished now bar these wee jobs I'm doing. So the focus is really on getting ready for next the next cycle essentially, getting the tops in. That's so why I'm trying to get these jobs with the lambs out the road first and then I can focus on the ewes, bring them in, condition scoring, getting them ready, but that'll be a, another vlog that we can go through. Another great thing about shearing your lambs, step out the sun, you get so many more in the race when you're doing it, when you're working with them. And same goes with putting them in the trailer to move them around, I'll get so many more in. Take them to wintering, they'll stay cleaner when it gets into the really dirty wet months. They should thrive more as they'll eat more, they'll be a wee bit cooler. The weather's good just now, they'll be a wee bit cooler, they should eat more. As a result of being a bit cooler to because it'll generate more energy and they'll project, put more weight on and grow better. That is another idea behind the shearing. Not only that, but some of the bigger Chivet mule lambs in here will probably get a look at the top for a couple of weeks, at least one cycle I think, and see if we can get any of them in lamb. Uh, I, I said before I went top hogs, <laughs> but I think I will. So step one there was dozing them with Zolvix. We've already done the vlog on Zolvix, so I don't need to go into too much detail about that. Step two, I'm going to go through them, identify the ewe and weather lambs. The weather lambs should have a notch out their ear from marking time, so they're easily identified. However, there is some that weren't marked with long tails, and there's a few top lambs running. Amateur setup, so I'll need to pick them out as well. Give them a wee spray and we'll tag all the weathers and top lambs with a single tag with only the flock number on it. These ones go in lambs that are destined for the food chain and you won't be keeping them more than a year so you can tag them with these tags and all they have, everyone's the same, same flock number on them. Tag goes in the ear, it's got an electronic chip in it that can be scanned and read at the market easily and every lamb being sold into the food chain has to have one of these tags at the very least. So I'll show you what I mean by tagging and also when I say there's a notch in their ear, I'll just show you, first of all I'll show you the notch. Now for tagging the lambs, you get your pack of tags, I use Shearwell, I like them, they've got a wide bit at the top here, which I think is good for stopping it slipping around the lambs ear, because what can happen is you get the ones that are the same width, I find anyway, and you see it a lot when you're shearing, the same width and they go through, you tag them but they'll, they'll slip through. So they should sit near like that, but what will happen is, because this bit isn't thick, 
like they are with the shear belt tags, they slip through and end up maybe around that way, and that can rub a wee bit in the ear and can cause infections, and it's just unnecessary, I think. So I like these tags, they're, they're absolutely solid as well, which is another good factor, so they should last you. I've found no issues with them, and they wear well. You're still gonna lose a few, obviously, that's just the nature of the beast. Just notice I've already got one in the set of pliers. So you take the tag out, the set, simple, you look at your pliers, for shear belt tags, there's obviously there's a round bit here and a square bit at the bottom, self-explanatory. You pop it into suit where it goes, it sits in like that and it should close over nice and square. For these slot tags, I put them in the left ear. I'll need to Google that and see if that's right or not, it's just what I've always done. So very simple, up behind the lamb, it's like getting your ear pierced. Don't go more than halfway over the ear and I always try to, some people might say that's a bit too much there, I think that's alright. I try and leave plenty of, you know, I don't want it tight up against the ear, bending the ear over. I like to leave a little gap in here. So that it's not causing any irritation. So that's, I'd say that was bang on perfect for tagging. Some of you might think it needs to be a bit further in. Save it flopping about so much. I think that's all right there. But, as always, I'm here to learn. See, it's just a wee nip, just like getting your ear pierced. So, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is breeding tags. We've done the single EID tag, and now we're going to do breeding tags and explain a bit about them. I actually got asked a question, a good question the other day about tags from a friend, and they were asking about how they go about getting their flock number for ordering tags. Now, this has changed recently in the last two or three years. Where before you, as a landless keeper, which is what I am, which means I don't own any land, so I don't have my own base, my own flock, essentially, you used to be assigned a flock number, and that's what you'd use to order tags. But the way it works now is the tags that you put in your lambs has to relate to the place that they were born. So where these lambs were, they'll have a different flock number than the mule lambs, although they're all my stock. That's just the way the rules are these days. I don't make them. I just break them, unfortunately, but not in this case. That's in our story. Inspection's coming up soon, guys, by the way. Get your books in order. Breeding tags. Two tags. One's an EID, electronic chip tag. The other one is just a plastic dummy tag, essentially. Every breeding sheep has to have two tags, one in each ear, obviously, unless she's only got one ear. Then you can do whatever you like. So, dead simple. That bit of ground there, I don't know what the next consecutive number is for the breeding tags, because every sheep has an individual number. Hopefully you can see that there. Your tag company will work all that out for you, you just put the CPH number and the flock number in, and they work out what the next consecutive individual number is for your breeding sheep. Great start, and also maybe a good one to cover as well. Straight away I missed an ear, and I've just locked the tag over, so essentially this tag is defunct now, because you can't undo it once it's tagged, or you can, you probably could, but, but it's never going to work. So, the lamb has one tag in, and I'm left with the other tag. All you need to do with that is, write down that number, 463, just write a wee note in your book, defunct tag. That way it keeps your records right, so I'll cut this tag out here, and just put another tag in. That is that job done, lambs have been dozed, and tagged, I'm going to bring them back round in their batches now, they've been split, male, female, bring them back round and start vaccinating them. As you can probably see, I'm sweating like mad, it is roasting. Heptivac. We talked about this already, the lambs, get two mils, get a jag now, a jag in four weeks, get some on the system, and they'll get a booster in the spring. Next, I'm just going to read the ear tags, that way, although I know the sequence that they go, minus the one that I made a mess of, I can just print out a list of the tags and keep it in my movement book, it's just handy if any, heaven forbid, should pass away or whatever, I can just score them off as we go. <laughs> 32, but it's 33 in the race, try again. Go it. So once I print this out, I then get my batch number of my drugs I've been using today. Dead simple. Once I've printed this out, get the batch number off the box. 
and I just put the date, which is 18th, 9th, 20th, and it's Hotel 350 Yankee Alpha 06 Hep, and then my Solvix. Also, what I'll do here with these tag numbers is I'll just write the movement and that keeps the job right. And then I'll just staple this in my movement book. So, the lambs that you just saw shown are all running here. That video was about a month ago. It was actually more than a month ago now from today's date, hence the hair's grown a little bit. And I've maybe aged about three years because it's been a busy month. They're running on this. Good, looks pretty lush. That's because it is. It's a dairy farm here. So, best of grass. They've really went on and thrived and they're looking well. I don't really want to stir things up by gathering them in just for the sake of the video, if I'm honest. Take my word for it, they're going great since they've been shown. That's the end of this video, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Hope you've clicked that subscribe button. The numbers are going crazy. Like, you guys are absolute legends. Anyone who's uh, bought a jacket from me as well recently, or a t-shirt, or a beanie hat, or anything at all, thanks very much. I'm a glutton for punishment because I now go home at nights try to edit videos and answer emails till like 1, 2 in the morning and then try and do other jobs as well. It's, uh, I think I'm going to need to get an extra member of staff. I'm going to need to get someone to help me out. But I do appreciate it and I will, if I need to stay up to get all the orders done and out, I will do it. Thanks very much guys. See you next time.